All right, I'm going to knucklehead my way through the um, flippers on taxi. So right off the bat, I'm going to move them over to my reference layer, which was 10. Um, so I can kind of clear the clear everything else out of the way. All right, so these are on 10 now. And I did put the rest of the rubbers in. And uh, I should have mentioned, too, that um, sometimes rubbers are um, up high. So make sure you have a reference image for your um, for your game. Because um, like these rubbers, if I had just started placing these at playfield level, um, let's see, where is it? Not rubber 13. There it is. It's called pin 20. It's visible, and its height is 119. So that's you know if a ball is at is 50 points, 119 is way up. Um, and so if you're going to have a collision. You need to make sure that you also move um, this mesh way up. In this case, I moved it to 85. Something you probably should check in a 3D editor. Uh, the other thing to note, like on Taxi um, and other places as well, as well, is that uh, not every rubber collision was set up as, as a rubber initially. And so I brought all the rubbers over and did those. But um, the sleeves, the post sleeves, were walls. Um, so I've deleted those and, and um, made these, you know, sleeves uh, like that. Um, so I, th I think the moral of the story is um, have a reference image of the table next to you and make sure that you are doing what that reference image tells you or get a couple of reference images. Some, some guys post pictures of games that they've hacked up pretty bad or put rubbers in the wrong place or whatever. Anyway, I think those were the corrections I needed to make. Uh, from the last video. I should also um, say Benji took me to task for downplaying the importance of the flipper physics and he is right. I'm, I've just always been such an evangelist of the rubber dampeners um, but the flipper physics are equally as important and uh, really transform a game. So in order to do this we need a point uh, to tell us when the um, flipper is at rest. or um, Yep, so that's right there. And then a trigger that goes 23 visual pinball points around the entire uh, perimeter of the flipper. So I've chosen a game from the same era, Starlight, um, from 1984. And so the flippers are the same size. I mean, those didn't change um, in those you know four years between this and Taxi. Um, so, you know, same, same manufacturer, same era, pretty safe bet to just copy and paste. And then, you know, that is surprisingly good. Um, so it's pretty safe to say that the manufacturer did not change the default position of the flippers and our art for one or the other projects is just off a little bit, which is pretty common. Um, okay, so we're done. That's everything you need to do um, with triggers in order to set up uh, the Roth Fozzy physics. Just kidding. Um, so we need to make sure that this is named endpoint RP. This is trigger RF. And I'll show you how to build one of these from scratch because you're going to come up with examples where um, this is not a good match and this is actually not a perfect match either. Um, so uh, one way would be to create a box that is 23 points and you can do that easily by just uh, going up here and grabbing a point and setting this at zero um, this at 23 this at 23 and 23 And this at 23 and 0. All right, so now you have a 23-point box. There's a visual of this um, in the written tutorial, so nothing new here. But what you can do is um, place these boxes and rotate them um, around the perimeter. Like so. Um, 
and you would do a number of these. I'm um, kind of rushing through because nobody wants to sit through 25 minutes of mine yakking. All right, so I'm just going to give an example of how this would go. You would put these all the way around. Um, but we're going to um, create a trigger. Just going to do the same thing as this one over here. Um, it's not going to be visible in the game. Um, it's going to be a none trigger. There we go. And we're going to start placing our points like this. And when you want to add a point, you just right click on the line and it adds a point. You could also take a pre-existing one and just reshape it to the boxes that you place. And then in order for this to be rounded, um, there's a like a handle in the um, points here for smooth. And you change it to smooth. And then that's what you'll get. Okay. So that you know, so that's one way, and then uh, you know the other thing you could do is create a kicker. That is um, 11 and a half points for the radius. Um, and then you could move that around and position it. One of the really frustrating things in visual pinball is when you have a kicker or a gate in front of um, an object, it becomes unselectable um, like its points do. So for example, if I moved this point here, it's lost to me. I can never like even when that's selected, I can never click that point. Um, it's enough to make you want to smash your computer. So I would have to move this, grab this, get it out of the way, replace this. And then, you know, and then slide this over and then make sure that it's on the outside so that I can manipulate it again. So much fun, right? So we got that. And that. This is um, 10.6. I don't. I haven't installed 10.7. There just there weren't any features in it that interested me, and it seemed like a more unstable beta than 10.6 maybe ever was. So I have just steered clear. Maybe I'm just fossilizing. Um, turn into a grumpy old man. And then I, I don't know what the function of that is, but it was on the uh, sample, and so I'm replicating it. I don't ask questions. Should add some more points and smooth those out. But for the sake of this example, you could uh, just copy this once you're happy with it, paste it, flip it along X, Make sure it has the proper name and put it on your other flipper. So you really only have to do that once. I will correct this before I, I do much more. I'm just trying to be efficient time-wise here. Okay. Make sure you get rid of that. I'll grab a ball. All right, and then we want to make sure that our physics are correct, and that's just using the values um, from the uh, written version of the tutorial. Um, and it just depends on the era. Um, so we're doing taxi, it's got some ramps, so, you know, 22 is okay, it could go a little bit higher. Um, but we're talking mid 80s, so 
0.88, and you can you know you can select both flippers at once and uh, make the values the same. We'll say 2400 and 0 0.88 and 0 0.15. Yeah, anyway. So there you go. All right, moving on to the script then. Down at the bottom where I dumped the uh, rubber dampener stuff, we also need to put some flipper stuff. In fact, the rubber dampeners uh, won't even work until some of the other flipper stuff is added. So uh, we're going to start with uh, some correction functions um, that we're going to copy and paste. I typically just put these at the bottom of the script, um, kind of out of the way, because they're long and a little unwieldy. Unwieldy. All right. Uh, then there's flipper corrections um, based on the era. Um, so that's b because of the strength being different. So. Um, Put that down here too. This is a mid 80s table, so I'm using the mid 80s values. And then I have um, flipper tricks code. And there are a couple of versions of this floating around out there. This one's pretty complete. Roth has made a couple adjustments, but I think this is pretty good. And you can put this at the end of your script, or you could put up higher where your um, flippers are actually called. Because um, there are some variables in here that you can adjust. You know, if you don't like the live catch, you can mess with that. And once those are pasted in, we're going to find our key down sub and find where the flipper key is hit. Okay, that's the left flipper key. And so we're going to get rid of this where it tells the left flipper to rotate to the end. Instead, we're going to replace it with um, LF fire. And we're going to combat comment out the left flipper rotate to end and we'll do the same thing for RF fire and we're also going to for each of these we're gonna um, add LF press equals one and RF press equals one this is all laid out in the written tutorial so um, follow along with that um, but this is fairly universal. The key code, um, if then, is sometimes written out a little bit differently. Um, but, you know, if you know basic if then statements, you can figure out how to make that function correctly. And then uh, for the key up, we also have a little work to do there. Um, We're going to make LF press equal zero and RF press equal zero. And then we're going to add some variables there. and some variables there. Then at the top of the script, um, we want to go up and take a look at use solenoids. Um, so one is uh, not using a routine called um, fast flips. So the uh, flipper controls are going, being routed through um, the ROM. If you use two, you're using um, a thing that NFOSI uh, originated and a bunch of guys, DJ Rob X, uh, and others, um, integrated into um, pin MAME, which is uh, use solenoids too. So fast flips, it bypasses the ROM, gets rid of some of that flipper lag. So um, got to make sure that's two, unless you're using a, like a late um, era Williams. There's a few games where it won't work right, or um, some modern Stern games as well. But for the most part, use solenoids too is something you really want to do. There are a few games you come across where um, fast flips was 
uh, implemented in the script. Uh, I just ran across that on fire. There was just a kind of a small window where that was being done into, before it was um, integrated into Visual Pin MAME. In that case, um, I don't know, you kind of have to kind of delete all that fast flip stuff, make it look like a normal uh, flipper implementation, and then turn your use solenoids to two. So, so hopefully if everything went right, we'll have flipper tricks. And if not, and we'll do some troubleshooting. That happens, certainly. Oh, yeah, you can tell. Sweet. Yep, feels great. So there you go. Sort of a sloppy version of how to implement the uh, Roth Fozzy flippers um, into kind of a good representative game here. As always, there's weird variations and problems. Um, there's guys around that are, you know, great at offering help and. Hopefully in those cases you can find someone to answer a few questions. Um, I certainly will help anytime I can. So I hope that was helpful and uh, we'll go over just basic um, physics updates. That's part three of uh, Roth's tutorial um, another time.